Hello and welcome back. I, I'm fairly certain I'm going to call this At Home with Pastor Tom. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the Pot Sound Church of the Nazarene in my basement. Um, these um, uncertain circumstances have left us in a uh, bit of a predicament trying to find a way to worship and to fellowship without being able to worship and fellowship at the church. So I'm going to do some worship give you some thoughts of, of for the day, but I thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get started, I just want to just give a shout out to all those men and women who are in the hospitals right now, uh, who are working hard to keep us safe. Um, we're praying for you. We love you. We thank you for everything that you're doing, and um, know that you're in our prayers every day. Um, so we want to thank you. We're going to worship this morning, and um, this is the week that starts Holy Week, and so this week starts Palm Sunday. And since we're not together, I thought we would just start off with a good old hymn, Hosanna Loud Hosanna. Um, I'm not great at doing hymns on the guitar, so we're going to see how this goes. But if you're out there, you're listening in, I want you to join with me, Hosanna Loud Hosanna. <clears throat> Hosanna loud, Hosanna, the little children sing, through pillar, court, and temple, the lovely anthem ring, to Jesus who had blessed them, goes folded to his breast, the children you joining me here. Uh, this is interesting, new, and unique times, especially for me. There's a lot of times I'm not real sure exactly what to do or what to say, but I know that we're praying for you guys. Uh, thank you for joining in. If you haven't been receiving my emails and you want to, uh, you can send me your email address if you go to pottstownnazarene.org and click on the contact us button. You can send me a link and I will make sure I add you to our email list. I try to send some words of encouragement throughout the week. You can also check us out on our Facebook page, uh, Pot Sound Church of the Nazarene. That way you can stay in touch with us throughout the week. If you want to drop me a line, you can go to our, if you have my email address, you can just send me an email. What's going on in your life? I'm, I'm wanting to hear from you. Um, I appreciate all the, all the stories I've been getting so far, but I really do want to hear from you. So if you have my information, uh, you can send me a link. If not, you can go to Potsound Church or potsoundnazarene.org, click on the contact uh, button and send me a link and uh, tell, me, tell me what's going on in your life. Um, this week, as I said, starts the interesting journey that we have to the cross of, of Holy Week. Um, and it starts with Palm Sunday. And I almost feel obligated to read the Palm Sunday story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. And I'm going to read this story from John chapter 12, and it's going to lead me to where we're going this week. So grab your Bibles. You're more than welcome to, to, to read along with me. 
John chapter 12. I'm going to read this story from John chapter 12, starting in verse 12, and it reads like this. The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down to the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at that time that this was to fulfill the prophecy. But after realizing Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead. And they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him. Because they had heard about this miraculous sign. And then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. Bless the reading of God's word. I, I read that and I, and I think... Jesus is riding into the city amidst jubilant celebration. The crowd is gathered to meet with Jesus. The crowd is gathered to sing praises to God. And it, it makes me think. You see, this is the day that begins this journey to the cross. And we've been, we've been reading about this idea of the journey of the cross and the shadow of the cross. And we've been talking about it for the last several weeks. And in the shadow of the cross, we, we have found that we can be pretenders sometimes. The next week I talked in the, in, the, the, in the shadow of the cross, the cross demands a choice. And then the week after that, the cross demands your presence and then the cross demands brokenness. And last week I spoke about how the cross demands faith. And here we have a story. A story that's beginning a week that is going to end in tragedy. And it begins with a celebration. It begins with a celebration, with a party, but it's going to lead to sorrow this week is going to lead to, de to betrayal, it's going to lead to denial, it's going to lead to a beating, and it's going to lead to Jesus ultimately giving his life on a cross and a crucifixion. But before we get to the sorrow, and the betrayal, and the denial, the story starts out with a celebration. As I was reading in my studies the last couple of weeks, there's been a line that's been jumping out at me. One I haven't been able to get over, and I want to read it to you. It's from John chapter 20. John chapter 20, and it's verse 15. And it reads like this. I'll start from verse 14. And verse 14 sets it up. It says, she glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked. You see, this is the part of the story that Mary Magdalene made her way down to the tomb. They made her way down to the tomb and they found out that Jesus' body has been removed. Or so they thought. They found Jesus' tomb empty. And inside the tomb there were angels. And the angels asked Mary one simple question. Why are you crying? And then not long after that she turns around and to the man she thought was the gardener asked her the same question. Mary, why are you crying? See, Mary Magdalene just witnessed one of the most horrific things she could have witnessed. Her friend, her mentor, her teacher, her rabbi was nailed to a cross and crucified for crimes he did not commit. She watched him die. She watched them place Jesus in a tomb. And now, several days later, there she is standing at the entrance of that tomb. And where is Jesus? Jesus is not there. He is gone. The angels, the angels let her know that, that he is risen. 
And then Jesus stops her and says, Mary, why are you crying? That, that hit me. That spoke to me this week. Spoke volumes to me. Because here we have a woman who has just experienced sadness, brokenness. I spoke a couple of weeks ago that tears were a part of the cross. There were people crying. Crying is a way that we crying is the way that we relieve our grief. And here she is crying. She's crying because Jesus was dead. She was crying because Jesus was missing. And she didn't know where he was. You see, she loved him. That's why she was crying. But those words from Jesus, why are you crying? That spoke to me this week, and I'm, I'm going to touch on that in a minute. I want to I wanna do that by taking you to a completely different part of Scripture. I want to take you to Luke chapter 15. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn to Luke chapter 15 with me, you can. I want to take you to Luke chapter 15 because it was in Luke chapter 15, I think I finally understand what Jesus was saying in John chapter 20. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect these dots here in a minute, but you got to bear with me. I'm not going to read the entire chapter of John or Luke chapter 15, but it's the entire chapter. And I want you to take some time this week to read that and just, just meditate on what Jesus is trying to say. But in Luke chapter 15, Jesus is telling the parables of the lost, I'm going to call it. He, he tells the parable of the lost sheep. He tells the parable of the lost coin, and then he tells the parable of the lost son. I want to break this down for you just, just very briefly, because I want you to try to understand what Jesus was saying in the garden that day in John chapter 20 when he looked at Mary Magdalene and he said, Why are you crying? So to Luke chapter 15, it starts off with the story of the lost sheep. The lost sheep, we, we, if you've been to church at all, you've probably heard the story of the lost sheep. If you haven't, let me give you the condensed version. There was a shepherd, he had a hundred sheep. He had a hundred sheep and one of those sheep decided that he was going to run off, hide, disappear, maybe he got lost. And, and as the shepherd, the good shepherd, is counting up his sheep, he realizes, he realizes that one sheep is missing. Of the hundred sheep, he has ninety-nine. But he's missing one. And the story says that, the, that that good shepherd left the 99 to find the one sheep. The one sheep was so valuable that he left the 99 to go find him because he couldn't bear that one sheep was lost. The story says when, when the shepherd found the sheep, he rejoiced in celebration. I once lost my child. Not exactly what you think. It wasn't a wasn't a tremendous big deal. But I, I once lost my child, my oldest daughter. She was about two years old, and we were in a Walmart. And Walmart has these clothes racks that have like four corners. And we were in the clothes rack. My wife was looking for something. I'm not real sure what. And, and I, my responsibility was just to make sure that that my oldest daughter was with us. And and I turned around and she was gone. Because kids do that from time to time. I don't know if you ever realize that, but if you ever have kids and you turn around, your kids vanish. They're very elusive. And it was only for a second, for a moment, I turned my back. But she, she was gone. And I panicked. There was this feeling of, of fear that overcame me. It was, it was frustration. It was, it was terror. I was scared. I couldn't find my daughter. And I, and I started looking everywhere. I started calling her name. It was about three or four minutes of searching the clothes rack. I was looking up and down the aisles, looking. And, and I stopped and I heard a giggle. I heard a giggle coming from inside one of the clothes racks. 
and I open up the clothes and there my daughter, she had climbed into the clothes rack. She was hiding from daddy. And there she stood giggling, but I, I, I was so overwhelmed with joy. I just picked her up, gave her a big hug. I went and found my wife because she was looking frantically on the other, in, in another aisle. And I went and I said, I found her. And there we were in Walmart in jubil celebration over a daughter who was hiding in the clothes. She was playing hide and go seek. She just didn't tell me. I remember that day. I was scared. But my fear turned into jubil celebration. Jesus continues in Luke chapter 15 to talk about the lost coin. He tells the story of how this woman had ten coins and, and she had lost one of them. And, and she couldn't bear the fact that she lost one of these coins. So she searched the entire house toward limb to limb. And finally, after hours, what seemed of searching, she found the coin. And she was so overwhelmed with joy, she called her friends. And this wasn't like the time of cell phones. She didn't just pick up the phone and say, hey, look. No, she stood on the balcony, stood at the doorstep and said, hey, look, I found that which was missing. And her friends all came over and shared in her jubile celebration. I can relate to this. I almost lost 20 bucks. 20 bucks may seem like 20 bucks. But if you don't have money and you're living paycheck to paycheck, 20 bucks is kind of a big deal. And one day I lost my 20 bucks and I couldn't find it. I had come home. I, I'm not real sure in which of my transactions I, I, I lost it, but I, I searched all day for it. And you ever realize that when you lose something, you, you start to like, I call it stupid look for stuff? You look in the same spot you just looked because maybe you missed it. Like, I looked in an empty box like three times because I thought maybe in the empty box it would magically appear. You look in your car, you look under your car seat. Like, maybe if I check under my car seat again, it's going to be there. You know, that kind of stupid look for it because you're so overwhelmed. You're so, where did I put this $20? I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere. I looked underneath the the couch. I looked underneath the couch that I haven't sat on for weeks. Looked in the cushions. Maybe it's there. I looked in my daughter's room. Maybe she took it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it and so I just kind of chalked it up to I guess I just lost $20. And uh, Went about my day, went about my week and probably a couple of months later I put on a jacket that I don't usually wear. I have a jacket for church purposes. It's a very nice kind of fake leather jacket black it goes along with some of my outfits and I got it on a great deal at Kohl's it was a wonderful buy I don't wear it very often I wear it maybe three or four times a year but I put that jacket on I reach my hand in the pocket and lo and behold then I find my twenty dollars you see what had happened is I had worn that that jacket to church that morning but because I don't wear it very often, I took it off, I hung it up in the closet. It wasn't a few, it was a few hours later when I realized I lost the 20 bucks. Totally forgot that I had worn that jacket. So I checked my other coat pocket, but not the one I was wearing. And lo and behold, I found $20. And let me tell you what, when you're not expecting to find $20, and you pull $20 out of your pocket... Praise the Lord, man. I was like jumping up and down. My wife was like, what are you so excited about? I'm like, I just found 20 bucks. Jubilant celebration followed. This woman, she had lost a coin. But she had found it. And all her friends gathered. All her friends got together. To share with her in that celebration. Jesus begins to tell another parable in Luke chapter 15. And he tells the parable of the, law, the, parable of the lost son. Better well known as the prodigal son. How the son went to his dad and said, Dad, I, 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 want, my, I want my inheritance. Because I want to go off and do my own thing. And the dad obliged. He gave him half of everything. And the son went. 
squandered it all on the worldly pleasures and found himself broken, lost. Eating food out of a pig trough, he finally says, you know what? It's time to go home. He goes home and, and much to his dismay, his dad wasn't angry, upset. His dad was alive with joy overflowing with joy that his son had come home. And he looked and he said, let's throw a party. The father was so overwhelmed with joy that his son had come home. He said, let's throw a party in jubilant celebration. See, all three of these stories Jesus was telling had four components. In every one of these stories, there was something valuable. The sheep, the coin, the sun, they were all valuable to those, those whom possessed it. They were, they were very valuable to, to the people who were in charge of it. And in every story, it got lost. That valuable thing that was so precious got lost. Whether by mistake or whether by choice, it got lost. And in every one of these stories, the third thing we find is that everything that was lost became found again. And the fourth thing that we find in every one of these stories is they threw a party. They threw a party. They had a celebration. They had a celebration because what was lost is now found. You see, Jesus was telling these parables because he was making an, uh, making an understanding that when lost souls come to Jesus, it's time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. And in every situation, Jesus made an emphasis on the celebration. See, it's important to recognize when lost souls come to Jesus. It's important to recognize when, when the lost are found. And as I read those stories again this week, the line from John chapter 20 where Jesus says, Why are you crying? Why are you crying? And it doesn't say this in the scripture, but let me kind of give you my own personal interpretation of what that means. Jesus looked at Mary and said, why are you crying? Why are you upset? Why are you broken? It is because of what I did. It is because the death and resurrection on his cross that lost souls are going to be found. It's because of what I did that people are going to understand that Jesus is Lord of Lords. This is no time to be crying. This is a time of celebration. You see, Holy Week began with Jesus riding in on a donkey and people chant, chanting, Praise God, glory to God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes into Jerusalem with a celebration. And after all is said and done, Jesus looks at Mary and says, It's time to continue the celebration. The cross demands your worship. Yes, the death and resurrection, yes, the death of Jesus was one of the most horrific things in human history. But the resurrection was the greatest thing Jesus has ever done for us, for you and for me, to be able to say that he has now entered into our world, that we could know him in a real way. The fact that he conquered death in that one moment. The cross demands your worship. And you take a look at the world today. The world is broken. How can I worship in times like these? How can I
couldn't worship knowing that thousands of people are in hospital beds. Doctors are working their fingers to the bones, risking their own lives to save lives. How can we worship at a time like this? You see, it is through worship. It is worship that takes our eyes off the chaos that is in this world and turns us back to who Jesus is. It is in our worship, it is in our worship that we take off Take off the me and look to Jesus. And in a time where the world is uncertain about what next week is going to bring, I believe it is now more than ever that the church needs to worship. The church needs to turn our attention to God. I saw a beautiful story the other day. I was flipping through the channels and one of the news stations had a group of doctors and nurses meeting together before their shift, praying. Praying that God keeps them safe. Praying for their soul. And for the souls that they will be working on that day. What our world needs now more than ever. Is our worship. You see worship is not about us. It's about Jesus. Worship reflects our lives and turns it towards Jesus. Worship puts God back where he belongs. At the top of our priority list. In a world that vies for our attention every moment we're awake, it's important to understand that Jesus is the center of our attention. And too often we let this world get the best of us, and too often we see all the brokenness and all the hurt and all the pain and all the death, and we think, where's God? Too often we just fail to turn ourselves towards worship. See, right now, if you're finding yourselves in the midst of turmoil, turmoil, brokenness, worship God and let the God of peace give you peace. If you need wisdom in this difficult time, worship the God of wisdom and you will find wisdom. And when you're faced with the impossible task of loving the unlovable, then let the God who is love become your love. See, worship is a time we pay deep, sincere, and awesome respect, love, and fear to the one who created us. Sometimes we look around and say, how can we worship in a time like this? It is times like this we need to worship. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. It is time to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate what Jesus did. Worship should cause us to reflect on the majesty and graciousness of Jesus in contrast to our own unworthiness, our singing, our praying, our studying His Word, even our tithing and our communion are all designed by God to bring us closer to Him 
and it calls us to think as He thinks and to become more like Him. It is through our worship we are transformed. People say things all the time, and I've been hearing them. They've been writing me things like, I don't feel close to God. I don't feel God being close to me. Has God abandoned me? James 4.8 says this, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Worship is all about opening up our hearts, bearing our souls before the Almighty God, and say, God, here I am. I am here to surrender everything I got. I'm going to draw closer to you. And the beauty about God is the more we open our hearts, the more we come before God, the more we worship Him, the more He comes in and fills our lives with what we need. In a day and age where we're broken, in a day and age where we feel helpless, if we worship God, we open our souls, He will fill us. He will heal us. He will restore us. The truth is, the closer we draw to God, the closer He draws to us. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, one of my favorite passages in all the scripture, If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The more we seek out God, the more we find Him. Worship is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of seeking God. It's a matter of laying bare before God. Worship helps us develop a God-like and Christ-like character. We become like we become like those we admire. When we worship God, we tend to value what God values and gradually take on his characteristics and the qualities of God. Philippians 2:5 says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ." It is through worship we are transformed. The cross demands your worship. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to worship God. Sometimes we don't know how. But I'm reminded of that story, reminded of that line, why are you crying? Too often we go through Easter week and we fail to see the celebration. Yes, the cross demands your presence, and yes, the cross demands a choice, and yes, the cross demands brokenness, and the cross demands faith, but it also demands your worship. Why are you crying? It is not a time of sorrow, but a time of celebration. I don't know what the next couple of weeks are going to hold. I don't know I don't know how we're going to put ourselves back together just yet. But here's what I know. Even in the midst of chaos and brokenness, it's a time of celebration. Because it's only through worship that we will draw closer to God. We will get through this. We will figure this out. And God's glory will be revealed. 
I'm gonna sing to you a song. It's all about worship. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna sing to a song that I wrote. I'm not never ever have been considered a uh, never been considered a songwriter. I've only written like three in my entire life. But I wrote this several years ago. And this week, as I was just thinking about these scriptures, God said, you need to share that. It's based on Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him from the skies. Praise Him, all His angels. And praise Him, all the nations of... all the armies of heaven. Praise Him, sun, moon. and Praise Him, all you twinkling stars. Praise Him, skies above and vapors high above the clouds. Every, let every created thing praise the Lord. And so I wrote this psalm. It'll lead into some worship time. And I pray that if you have to leave us, you can. You can turn me off right now or you can stick around and worship with me. I'm just going to worship this morning. Wherever you are, whatever time of day you're, you're watching this, I'm just going to worship. Join me. Take a moment to reflect God. Take a moment to reflect how you worship Him. And may this week, may this week, you learn to worship God. Call the Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. From the heavens and the heights above, all the angels in heaven. Lord, we praise you, sun, moon, and all your shining stars, praise you for who you are, Lord, we praise you. No. 
I worship you. The young and old, they will worship you. You raise us up. Gave us a new song to sing. Lord, we praise you from the heavens and our heights above. All the angels in heavenly host. Lord, we praise you. never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faith all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire Darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God Oh my life you have been faith all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness
my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God I want to take a moment to pray with everybody but before I do I want to sing one more song This song is fitting for where we are. And it says, when I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. And that I am not alone. Right now, there's a lot of people in a hospital bed. feeling alone. But we have the assurance to know that no matter how dark these days get, God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And we will never be alone. When I walk through deep waters, I know you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. of the shadows I will not fear cause I am not alone I am not alone you will go before me you will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone
my strength, yo. My defender. You're my refuge in this storm. Through these trials, you always be faithful. suffering right now need your touch many family members who are looking on from the outside need to be restored Father God we just give it to you today we know that you are here we know that you are in our presence Father, we just pray that you would just continue to guide us, continue to strengthen us, continue to keep us safe. Father, but God, but more importantly, we just ask you to continue to reveal your glory to us. We know these storms will pass. We know these trials will be overcome. And Father God, we just pray that Through all this, we just look to you. We love you, God. We praise you. We give you all the glory for this day. Amen.